And we are back for the next segment of our lore through playthrough next game new game plus of Horizon Forbidden West. And we have to get back to Chain Scrape because we are standing in front of a mine, a mine owned by Olvind, who seems to have blasted and delved too deeply and allowed the bristlebacks into the daunt. And we have to go back to talk to several people in order to confront that problem as well as to get Studius Wadis, the Sun Priest, moving to the embassy at Baron Light. So we will begin to come down the mountain here and head back to Chain Scrape. Hopefully you're having a good morning, my friend CF. Good to see you. Everyone else, thanks for hanging out today. And apparently Eddie is upset with uh, with Rocket. Took a bunch of tributes from her. That's what you get for being rich, though. So much talking. Yeah. Sorry, that's the whole point. Alright, we are going to shortcut our, our jump down here because we can. That is true. He did take everything from him. So Eddie is, of course, upset with you. Alright, let's have a look at our quest real quick to make sure we're not skipping something. So to the brink has us go talk to Olvind. The Bristlebacks has us talk to Javad. We're going to talk to Javad first. Because... <laughs> yeah. He took everything from Eddie but his hate. We'll give ourselves a quick save here just to make sure that nothing bad happens along the way and we lose some progress. This is an old ruin, I believe. We don't need a charger mount, we've got one. Probably a good thing we didn't walk down through there, just been a bunch of errors. We do need to hit our stash while we're in chain scrape though. Even though the uh, the whistle will not be blown, I don't think here. We do need to get some materials. We're running low on things we may need to make our more power powerful arrows. Back. Time to get Elvin to blow the whistle, then Wadis to bear light. That's the plan, anyway. That right there is Boomer. She likes to make things go boom. We'll meet her later. All right, so let's talk to old or to um, Javad first. I like Boomer. I think she could be a little reckless, but I like Boomer. What news do you bring? Picked up the bristleback trail by the quarry. Looks like they stampeded out of a mine at the back of the valley. The mine? How could a herd of bristlebacks come from there? I'm not sure, but Alvin's workers were using explosives to tap the tunnels inside. For the love of Dawn, I told him it wasn't worth the risk. Those tunnels, they run for miles underground, even beyond the daunt. No, you don't think. That Olven's blasting opened up a passage from the other side? Perhaps. Yes, perhaps. If this is true, we need confirmation. An inquiry. So thorough, so irrefutable, endorsed by the Savior. All right, I'll keep looking. I need to go. Of course. It says Javad wants proof. Irrefutable proof that Olven's greedy blasting in the mine is where the 
bristlebacks have come from. But we are going to talk to Olvind here to see if we can get the whistle blown and get things moving. I see. I cleared out all the bristlebacks. Oh, you did? Now that you've recovered from your shock, time to blow the whistle. Oh, there, not so fast. I'll have to send someone out to confirm the kills. Make sure the valley is safe again. It shouldn't take more than a day or two. <sighs> no, you blow the whistle now. These are innocent Osram lives we're talking about here. Surely the delay... Either you do it now, or I will. Ah, I knew you could do it! Friends, gather around. The savior of Meridian has done now it again. What? The Bristlebacks are defeated! Uh, you. What? Sound the whistle. Chain scrape is open for business! Terrific. Great. Yay. And Olvind has agreed to personally pay every worker their lost wages. Yeah. That's more like it. Yeah. Woo. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you have an embassy to get to? Yeah. I guess I do. Well, the chain scrapes back to work. Merchants should be open to trade. They should be indeed. I should see if they have anything <clears throat> useful before I send. What is off to Baron Light? A couple of things need to happen here. First, we're going to go talk to a weapon vendor and get our first look at these weapons that we really want to own. Brought out only the good stuff for you, Red. See it as you got that whistle blowing. Hey, I've been waiting to get my lucky hammer fixed for days. You haven't done anything useful like getting rid of any bristlebacks, though, have you? Take your time. I promise you won't be disappointed. Here we are. That is the one that we certainly want. Ereve's Downfall. I have three champion tokens. Great. I think Tears of the Land God is the other one I want. Yeah, that's the Hunter Bow. So, work to do in order to get those two weapons. Come back anytime. Now can I get this fixed? I can fix your tools. Afraid there's no fixing you. Well, how do you know I am the smartest man to ever stand exactly? All right, let's grab what we need to grab. She got burned. I do not believe there's anything at the outfits that is new, no. But we have everything we want here. Cardra Behemoth is actually interesting looking. But we will continue on. Alright. So, our quest has us doing what now? Talking to... Wadis. Shop just opened up and I've got a backlog of wood. Studious Wadis. This guy. The way to Baron Light is clear. Get moving. You're not Aaron Vanguardsman. I will move only when the captain when said. I cleared out all the bristlebacks, which I have. Captain's orders. So they're okay. Remember to and clonk that follow button. And waiting up ahead for you. But, but I, I was supposed to have three escorts. I'm off to Baron Lightbodies. Like Aloy said, Captain's orders. You can stay here. Abandoned to the riffraff? I think not. Guess you're coming with me then. See you there, Aloy.
Eddie just going after the people that hit the vault recently. Well, now that that's done, the embassy can Two champions tokens, so five to go for the first weapon. If I can get through it, I'll be able to track down Silence. Hades. <sighs> Maybe even a guy at backup. Surprised Wadis did not. For Baron Light. Or poke around the don't some more first. I'm surprised Wadis did not just on that drink. get on the back of that. In time, we shall earn our wins. Uh-oh. Mr. Landiggity's going for a boss. Surprised Wadis did not just get on top of that cart and allowed himself to be pulled. Okay, so we have some choices here. There's a couple side quests that pop. There is the... I'm sure that's Machine Strike. That will be Boomer. And then we have the... Mount an overridden charger. We already have an, a charger that we can ride, but let's take care of these uh, looks. At, I'm not going to play Machine Strike. I do not enjoy it. I don't enjoy games within games like that. So if that's what the quest is, then we will bypass it. But Petra who we met in a previous episode, is an Osram woman who does have a thing for Aloy, and she is the quest giver here. She met Aloy in Horizon Zero Dawn, and Aloy helped her effectively take care of some problems in her village. But she uh, she was originally one of the Osram who helped build the great elevators at Meridian, and now has moved out to the west for better prospects and landed herself here herself here in chain scrape under olven's purview let's have a, a chit chat with petra here come for that beer after all eh here sit down get a pint in her hand wasn't expecting you to swing by since when do i do what's expected <laughs> there's that spark fire and spit uh, fire and spit. <sighs> That's a blast from the bellows. Won't fix the forge, but at least I can forget about my troubles for a while. Like what? Well, things aren't as bad since you got this place running again. But we still got Olven grading the gears about his concession decree. Wounds to be tended. Down, I'll come over there Lessons and show you to how be that learned. Ends. Anyway. Right now, I'm just worried about those refugees out from Sunfall. To come all this way, enduring Forge knows what. Shadow Carja refugees. What are they doing in the Daunt? Mm, looking for a new home, I gather. They're camped out by an old trailhead, southwest of here. And therein lies the problem. A stormbird crashed up on the cliffs last week, and Tallinn Cleanbrokers had his eye on the salvage ever since. But the refugees have barred entrance. Mustn't interrupt their sun-scorched ritual. Something about finding a twilight path. Huh. I never heard them talk about that before. Yeah, well, these particular Shadow Karja are an odd bunch. But overall, they're peaceful folk. Not that it matters to Tolland. He'll crack some heads to get to that salvage. Maybe you could swing by. Convince him to set up camp somewhere else? So there are some Shadow Cards or refugees from Sunfall who don't want to rejoin the Sundom who have moved out into the Daunt, but they're peaceful, according to Petra. And she's concerned about them and what her Osirum brethren may do because there is a storm bird that crashed up there, and that's worth a lot. So the bristlebacks in the Daunt. <sighs> You're a pig. Blasted things, those bristlebacks. They just showed up one day, rampaging around the valley like they exploded out of a forge. <sighs> Lost some good people. But bless the bellows, you cleared them out and got this place working again. That put a dent in Olven's plans. Now, if only there were some way to smash them all together and run them out of town. But how could Bristlebacks and the Daunt help Olven? Two words. Concession decree. Since no one knows where the bristlebacks came from, Olvind has taken to blaming the Karja for him. He's hoping to dig up enough old resentments to get a strike going until the concession's signed. This is just his latest attempt. He's been trying to rile up the workers since the day he rolled into town. About that. I think the bristlebacks came out of Olvind's old mine. <gasps> now 
there's a spark that could light a fire. Can you prove it? I'm working on it. By the forge. Grab my ear if you nail it down. What else can you tell me about the Shadow Carja refugees? Well, they don't call themselves Shadow Carja for one. At least, not anymore. They're some other brand of sun crazed. But whatever side of the sun they're on, they're peaceful through and through. Don't seem to want for nothing except a place to live, pray, and just enough food to keep from starving. So they're just camped outside by a trail, blocking entry to a wrecked stormbird, waiting for what exactly? Don't rightly know, but I'll tell you this. Should they ever wise up and salvage it, a stormbird heart is worth a lot. And if they get there first, then by Ostrom Law, it's theirs. Not that Tolan Cleanbroker has ever lost sleep over any law breaking. Who is this Tolland clean broker? Just some chuff huffing pawnsman. Got a shop here in town. Lived in chain scrape since there was a chain scrape. He and Alvin go back a ways. Like a pair of coals and a campfire, those two. So Tolland works for Alvin? Ha! <laughs> Alvin might think so. But Tolland scrapes up his own scams. And he ain't the type to let a few refugees get between him and Stormbird salvage. I thought you'd be back in Freeheap. Well, after the big battle at Meridian, I went back. But realized it was running smooth. Didn't need me. Heard about the rebuilding out at Baron Light. Figured they could use another hammer. Been scraping by ever since. You could always leave. And go back east? Nah. I ain't one to leave a lit forge. Besides, someone's gotta be a squeaky wheel for the workers around here. So about Olvind? Around here, everything's about Olvind. How'd he end up in charge? He got here early, like a squirrel smelling a fat nut. He knew rebuilding barren light would need stone and timber. So he jangled purses all over Mainspring, getting investors to front claims on anything in the Daunt that might be worth a damn. Thing is, all the bankers back home know that this is Karja land, and the Sun King can revoke those claims at any time. That's why he's desperate for the Magistrate to sign off on a concession decree. So Mainspring is the Osram capital. And what Olvind has done is gotten a lot of backing financially from home to come here. But his claim on anything that he's done, apart from the wages he's earning, is tenuous unless he has a land claim, which is what he's trying to force with this decree. This concession decree, what is it exactly? And how would it help Olvind? It's pig diddle, that's what. A writ that would put all Osram claims in the Daunt under Osram law, even though they're on Karja land. It would mean that any existing ore, stone, and timber claims couldn't be revoked by the Karja. No more risk, no more hesitation for investors back in the claim to pour in the shards and expand their business. And since Olvind has a stake in all those claims, it would make him richer than a scrapper in a junk heap. Not to mention Chainscrape would become an Osram municipality, so he could buy enough votes to call himself an elder man. He's a sly old badger, I'll give him that. Figures if he keeps up the pressure, eventually the Magistrate will sign. So the Osram governmental system is different from the matriarchy of the Nora or the patriarchal kingdom of the Karja. It's actually a very loose democracy, and the Elderman is one of the elected officials of a given town or village. Well, if I'm up that way, I'll talk to the refugees. Try to convince them to move. Much appreciated. They have it rough. Don't need Tallinn making it rougher. Petra said Tallinn has a shop here in Chainscrape. I could have a word with him first. No, I do not fancy a game of strike. Thank you. All right, so we'll track down this piece of this side quest quickly. We'll talk to Toland in town, and then we'll pick up the other side quest. Toland is not a nice guy. You'll also notice that Osram have surnames that kind of are more like job titles like Aaron Van Guardsman which means their surname can change Took a hammer to your head. 
For example, Petra might be known as Petra Forge Woman. Hello, Tolan Clean Broker. Broker, meaning he buys and sells goods. And I don't know about the clean part. That's you. The machine hunter that bailed out the Karja. Never heard it put that way before. What do you want? Heard you've been hassling refugees up by the cliffs. Yeah, well, you heard wrong. There's salvage up there. A storm bird. Nailed it myself with the harpoon here in town. Not an easy shot if I do say so myself. It clipped its wing. And it crashed into the old tower up there. Killed it quick. Yeah, so if anyone's hassling anyone, it's the shadow cars of filth that's blocking the way up to my claim. And you're ready to crack some skulls to get to it? No need. It's a raggedy bunch. Probably all starved before I have to lift a finger. We'll see about that. Oh yeah, we will, won't we? Now shop's closed to Karja lovers. On your blasted way. Like I said, nice guy. He's got a legitimate beef if he did the work. Gilly! Thank you very much for the resub. 30 months. He's got a legitimate beef if he did the work to say, you know, I shot it down, I should have a shot at that, but he's just also an asshole. Good morning, sir. How are you doing today? A purple box. Alright, so before we head out, we have one more side quest to pick up, which I, I believe is Boomer's quest for either a... Oh, we do not want to do the melee pit. Thank you. Come on over here. This is the most butt clinchinous room in the whole land. Managed to sleep in and catch up on some rest of that was nice. Yeah, I slept poorly. I woke up early. Um, so I decided to continue on and keep producing some uh, some episodes for this series as we do our uh, our continued slow walk and explanation of lore through We're still in the daunt right now. But starting to chip away at it. Yes, here we go. These two are funny. Della and Boomer. I I'm sorry, I'll be right with you. Uh, okay, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I'm saying it's overkill. It's a weapon. Kill is the point. Not if it blows the user's arm off. Oh, just, just, just stop talking. Where are we? Ska. Ah. <clears throat> so, uh, you, you look like someone who's always searching for a new weapon. Am I right? Actually, I... Uh. But you're just not! I am with a customer! I... I'm not a customer. I got it! Triple the powder! It'll blow a strider sky high! Ba-boom! One shot kill, guaranteed. Uh, maybe I am. Then you are in the right place at the right time, Red. How would you like to be the proud owner of the world's first machine-enhanced, explosive, done-in-one, machine-wrecking, yet perfectly safe, javelin thrower? I mean, I've got one. Well, who are you two? Are you two from around here? Nah, the claim. Dad sent us out west in search of some unknown opportunity. Said we'll know it when we see it. Sounds like you had other ideas. Let's just say that opening another trading post for my parents isn't how I want to make my mark in this world. <sighs> I imagine traveling alone must be nice. So she's your partner? My apprentice and my sister. She's why we're out here. It was an incident. Another incident. Involving explosives? Ba boom And Dad's precious homebrew. He shipped us out the next day. Huh. Tell me more about this weapon of yours. I saw a scroll when I was a kid by some Karja scholar who wandered out west. I had a scary drawing of a Tanakh warrior hunting with a kind of javelin thrower. Effective? Yes. Basic, undoubtedly, but coming out here made me remember it. 
and I am on the brink of vastly improving the tool's archaic design. Whereas I will perfect it. I can use machine parts to enhance the user's throw, increase the projectile's velocity. Well, Boomer here is adamant that enhancing the projectile is better, namely with explosive tips. Boomsticks. Why not both? That could work. There's one small snag. I need the parts to make the first working model. Well, for starters, I'll need charger horns intact. Yeah, that. Just be sure to shoot them off before the machine goes down. Otherwise, they break. But the real innovation, and keep it to yourself, is a fang horn rib. There's a mean one east of here. Blow it sky high. Boomer! You get them for me. It's yours, my treat. You have a deal. A bigger boom. So we have options here now. We can go up to the Twilight Karja camp, or we can get the embassy rolling by getting a charger, or we can go take care of the fang horn. We already have the charger horns because I have a ton of them in my pocket. So we're going to go over here and take care of this thing for Boomer and Dello first. So off we go. Gilly, I hope you're having a good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. Ain't that the savior? Glad you slept in, sir. Thanks, Mr. Landiggity. I'm sure I didn't miss some rocks as we approach this bridge. What's more important are these sticks. Because we make arrows from sticks. My stash later. So let's go find Mr. Fanghorn here. There's Mr. Fanghorn. That Fanghorn should be nearby. Let's see if we can get it on a, on a first throw here. So what I have in my hand is a more advanced version of the weapon that they're trying to make. We just let everything else in the valley here know that we're coming. Gilly goes to the vault. Gilly fails at the vault. How did that miss? There we go. Let's have a look at the uh, scrounger over here that we brought down. That's, that's, <laughs> that's fair. So he went boom inside of this cave. That was the resource container that flew off of him on the javelin throw. And there's the rib we need. Got everything I need for Dylan Boomer. Now, I have to see about that weapon of theirs. We'll go up top and get that other scrounger. I believe there's a grapple point here. Yes. Oh. It's like Eddie knows. Sometimes it is. Alright, so that's done. We don't really need to do anything else with that until we return a chain scrape, so let's not double back too many times. The embassy, we have the twilight path here. <clears throat> we should get this one knocked out. And uh, the reason that I am still very heavily doing side quests is because they are worth champions tokens. And the champions tokens are what we need to buy the NG plus weapons. So we will walk now across to the other side and take care of this one. 
Um, 11's fine there, 14's fine there. Yeah, we're fine on our, on our ammunition. Uh, where is the path here? Uh, we actually could go south and make it a quicker a quicker jaunt. Yep. Wink. So, Mr. Landiggity, the other day you were saying, I think yesterday you were saying that you have uh, been sucked into Valheim. Did you not play it when it was, like, new and hype? Oh, hello, Burrowers. Because we played the heck out of that game when it first came out, and... And I still have the save from the server, but I don't know. Kind of like all survival games, I reached a point where I was like, and I don't know what else to do with it. Put your head back down. I believe this is where they wanted you to come for the charger horns. That did not kill it. That shot will. But we already had them. And I also have the game settings set to, I don't need to tear off parts. As long as I don't explode a machine, then the parts are still intact. Which is the way I prefer to play. I think it's dumb that if you drop a machine without breaking off its part, you don't get that part. I do respect the fact that if I explode the machine, the parts are damaged, so I have tailored my game settings to that. So I play on a very distinct custom difficulty when I hunt. And obviously everything here in the Daunt is very, very quickly droppable by me. Yeah, that's, that's kind of my logic. I get why the developers <clears throat> build the game the way they did. They want the, the combat to be challenging, and if you're playing on the very hard modes, and, and and there are times where I will certainly target parts. Like, I know that's what I want. I want to see it pop off. Um, but the idea that you lose the part entirely is um, always been, eh, I don't like that. I don't think it makes logical sense to me, and it bothers me every time that I would drop a machine and the part I wanted isn't there, even though I know I didn't destroy that part. So, yeah, and to Gil, Gil, your point, yeah, they've given, <clears throat> Forbidden West has given the player a lot of agency with respect to how they want to play the game, and uh, that was a very, a very early change I made in my, my Forbidden West run. I can override one of these chargers. I have to go on quiet, so I don't spook the herd. But I don't need to override one, I've got one. I could get on one right now. But if no, we still have to come back here. So we'll see if um, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's not be stupid. Let's just roll up in here and do it. So we knock out the uh, the quest. All right, so we don't need to, to, to... We have one, that's fine. Let's go ahead and dismount from this thing, though. Continue where we're going. It, um, it made certain things easier, for sure. I mean, there are certain parts, for instance, like sack webbing on frost claws and fire claws, that you cannot destroy the main blaze or frost canister, because if you do, the, the part will be destroyed. That makes complete sense to me. Which is why when you when I fight those things, I'm very careful about how and what I hit. Um, the sack weapon was a massive pain. Uh, not anymore. Um, I can drop a frost claw in two shots if I'm in stealth. Fire claw, a little bit, a little bit harder, but I can override fire claws, so. Well, that's because, my friend, Gilly, you are terrible at aiming. And that's not opinion. We have well-documented, you know, videos that show this fact. I, I I think it's more that you're you're okay with aiming, but you're you're one of the most impatient gamers I know. And 
Yeah, <laughs> you reject my reality and substitute your own. Okay. <laughs> the biggest problem I had in the original, the base game, was the idea that Apex machines spawn at night. Well, they spawn all the time, but they're much more likely to spawn at night. And Dead machines. I had a situation. Looks like someone's been trying to keep this trail clear. Remember to. I had a situation where I could not get a um, a slaughter spine to spawn. Those people are under attack. Hey, you up there? Aren't you gonna help? Oh, you're getting wrecked. I missed that one. Oh, the ant. Oh, hey. That's not nice. More machines. Get to safety. I'll handle the rest. Go, Lakasha. I'll help the Nora. Something else here. There they are. That didn't hit you? Really? And now we're good. No worries, Gilly. Better check on the refugees. We'll catch you when you get back from putting your groceries away. Well, I mean, there's no more machines. Of course the show's over. So we're coming up this mountainside to investigate some Shadow Karja refugees who don't call themselves that anymore. That is a blast trap. Let's go ahead and take that down. Don't need, don't, we don't need kids walking along here and uh, stepping on that. That's how they get hurt. That is a dye plant we don't care about. There's another blast trap up there. A couple of dead these burrowers. Yeah. We have some skill points we should probably burn. We have five. That's not enough. But our skill tree is not maxed out. Um, we have a couple. We have two items over here that we need to finish. And it will take... Three to get one here, and then five for the next one. So we've got some time. But that's not the Valor Surge we're using. We will we will probably hold on to Valor Surge we have equipped until the first major fight of the game. You defended the Order bravely. The Order. Lokasha of the refugees. Is it bad, Lokasha? Shh, now. Everything will be fine. Is everyone okay? Bruised, but not buried. Our order will live to see another day. Are you sure about that? We're no strangers to hardship, Nora. We've crossed half the Sundom with no more than the clothes on our backs. And as soon as our Sun Priest returns, our path will be clear. For now, we wait. Well, you're better off waiting somewhere else. Your people need shelter. There's a town east of- Chainscrape. Yes. We know of it. Savohar says it's not suitable for us. Who? Our sun priest. Our order has made it this far thanks to his guiding light. Okay, and where is this Savohar? 
He went up to the tower to meditate three days ago, and he won't come down until the sun shows him the way to our new home. The fallen storm bird is an omen, he said. And of course, he must be. I see. And how long do you plan on waiting for him? Until he returns. He will return. He must. You're Shadow Karja, aren't you? We are the Order of Twilight. The difference being... When the Usurper Avad killed his father, we fled with the Karja in shadow to Sunfall. Our lives there were... difficult. His Helis is a jerk? Savohar saw our misery, lifted us up, protected us from the corrupt priests and heartless Kestrels. When their rule ended, Savohar led us from the Shadowlands, the long night ends, and the setting sun will lead us to salvation, he said. And so he named us the Order of Twilight. We journeyed west in search of a better life. Why didn't you go back to Meridian? A bard is a patricide. We will not kneel to the likes of him. We must walk in twilight to our new home. Savohar will lead us there. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. So let me get this straight, Lokasha. You will not kneel to Avad because he killed his father. When that happened, you fled with the Jaron loyalists to Sunfall, but then things were bad there. As if they weren't already bad under Jaron and Meridian. This all stems from the idea that Jaron's a patricide, but then you went into the Forbidden West, or you approached the Forbidden West, this area, even though previous Sun Kings have basically said coming this far west is taboo. You shouldn't be here. Like, don't go past Sunfall. So, your religious conviction, your dogmatic conviction, seems to be very skewed. And that's what my problem is with the Order of Twilight. Is it seems like Savuhar was almost an opportunist here. He took people and formed his own little mini Karja cult um, and duped them. So, yeah. But they're in danger. There's an Osaram in Chainscrape, Talland. He wants the Stormbird up there. Yes. He was here just yesterday. A very unpleasant man, even by Osaram standards. He made all manner of threats. But we will not be intimidated. That's all well and good, but he's got friends. Sooner or later, his whole gang will show up. Sabohar will come through. He always does. We just need to give him more time. You're out of time, Lakasha. You need to consider packing up and- We won't leave him. And we won't let others disrupt his meditation. Well, they're going to try. It's almost like my my moral conviction here is, well, I've done my job. I have tried to warn you. You are being obtuse to the, the facts around you. But yet Aloy will persist. Your priest, Sabohar, you said he's been up there three days? His meditation can't be rushed. So he does this often? Meditating for days on end? Well... It doesn't usually take this long. But he will guide us through. He always has. We have faith. Sure. But shelter looks like a more pressing concern. Look at yourselves. Those machines nearly wiped you out. And Osram thugs are watching you, just waiting to strike. You're in danger here. You need to grab Savohar and get out. Our situation. This is the worst we've endured. I know we cannot stay here, but without Savohar to guide us, I, I don't... Let me up there, and I'll convince him it's time to move on. But his meditation... If he hasn't received his vision, he won't follow. At least let me check on him. If he's been up there for days... Yes. 
Yes, that is sensible, I suppose. Please, be careful. The trail up to the tower is falling apart. Savohar is strong, but it could not have been an easy climb. It rarely is. Let the Nora pass. <clears throat> so we're going to go check on Savohar. The sun priest who has led this rustic cabal into the west. The whole situation with these refugees is confounding to me because, I mean, I'm, I'm an a-religious person, but it's also contradictory to their religion. The idea that they're so convicted to reject Avad, Looks but like then head up. break taboo of other areas of their dogma really bugs me. So there's a ladder here we can drop to make our life easier. Which apparently is red marked on the side. So is that something we can shoot down? Yes. This was the first real exposure in the game to the new climbing system. In, in Horizon Zero Dawn, the climbing was almost like set pieces, where this was an obvious thing you had to climb. Whereas in Forbidden West, climbing is a little bit more freeform. Not Assassin's Creed freeform, but more freeform. And I think it's a, a nice balance. I think Assassin's Creed has gotten to the point where... Part of the ladder. Okasha was right. The trail's in bad shape. Where Assassin's Creed's gotten to the point where there is too much, too many handholds. Yeah, without becoming Breath of the Wild, I think is the point of Gilly. Is you can't climb everything, right? You can't get lost climbing everything. There are specific things you can climb, um, but you can't climb every mountain by hand. I think it was a, a very nice balance they struck. I can reach those beams if I jump against the cliff. But you can't. There's stuff over there, too. Not gonna be able to hit that. Alright, so let's focus on this. I'm not so concerned about the lockboxes. They'll still be here later. I jump against the cliff, she says. That's what it is. Okay. Not being able to see it's kind of a problem. There it is. All right. I see it. Otter must have broken off after Savohar passed through. I need to find another way up. But first, green shine. I'm in luck. That's not what we wanted. Hey, look at that. Didn't even mean to grab that. But that'll work. Broken bridge. I might be able to make the jump to the other side. I did make the jump to the other side. That's a lot of blood. 
have a horse. There's the storm bird. You mean the reason closer. your priest hasn't come down for three days is because he's bleeding it to death? Shocker. Those without the stomach for this place must move on. Rocket, we'll see you shortly, hopefully. Enjoy your lunch. Is it lunchtime already? Machines. Sure is. Sabahar must have snuck past them. I could probably sneak past them. Well, we're 100% going to take them out, but... There's a way back up. Three down. How many more are out there? Might be all of them. Nope, there's at least one more scrounger out there. Two more scroungers out there. Thought he was going to turn around on us there for a moment, but he, uh, he turned around on us and died. There's still one more. Might be out of range of this bow, but we'll try it. It was not. That's all of them. The benefit of properly coiling your weapons. One thing that I wish was at least a chance would be that arrow recovery could be a thing in a Horizon game. Given the amount, I, I understand the mechanic is that you're effectively paying for every arrow you fire because it requires metal shards to make. But it would be nice if there was a chance to get an arrow back, especially on a one-shot where you've made a very clean kill the machine didn't run around and break the shaft of the arrow type of a thing. It would be a a nice mechanical option. But I think it should be an earned skill. And perhaps only on specific bows. Like I don't think on warrior bows that's that should be an option. The warrior bow is rapid fire, you're gonna fire a lot of arrows, but I think on something more like a sharp shot bow where your intent is to fire the arrow once fire the bow once and get that that clean kill shot I believe that is our path back home with that launch point for grapple there or a repelling point there but we're gonna go up here and check in on uh Savohar <laughs> there's Savohar in pretty bad shape he is indeed in bad shape That ruin is something else, but we will come back to that later. The true sun above me, the true sun before me. Show me the way this even tide. <coughs> the true sun above me. You must be Savahar. The true sun before me. Show me the way this even tide. <coughs> No. No. The vessel must be empty for the coming vision. You don't need a vision. You need medical attention. On the way up, I saw parts of the trail had given way. 
Is that how you hurt yourself? My pain? Oh, God. The, the ritual. You're hurt bad. And your people are running out of time. Staring at the Stormbird isn't solving anything. You don't understand the omen. It fell here at the beacon. I just need to see the twilight path. My people will find their home. Listen, Makasha is doing the best she can down there, but machine attacks. Angry Osram. The Order is scared, Savar. The last rays of the even time will burn away their fear. I don't think so. What do you think's gonna happen here? If you sit long enough, the sun will show you something? A path to a new home. Well, it's about tree fitting. Salvation is at hand. Or some Osram shot it and it hit an old tower. Look, I think you punctured a lung. You can't heal it with prayer. The sun. Will provide, <laughs> and I will not lose faith. I'd be more concerned about losing blood. Your people are worried about you. They need shelter, security. The true sign of love. The true sign of form. Show me the way. I think you've been staring at your salvation this whole time. Gotta get over to that storm bird. Grab its heart. A storm bird heart is valuable. Enough to feed all the refugees waiting below. His answer is sunstroke and a prayer? Why does every priest I meet think blind faith is the answer to everything? So, we're gonna get this Stormbird heart for these people because it will at least give them some sort of financial means and by Osram law if I get there first then Toland does not have his claim Room that was watching the refugees probably went to get Tolland. I gotta get them out of here before he comes back. Signal Lens is a different collectibles quest. Guess I'll keep it for later. We will keep it for later. We're not gonna breach that one yet. A knockdown damage 15% coil is nice. And we have the heart. The order should be able to afford shelter with this heart. Some food and a change of. Some food and a change of clothes, maybe. Savahar? How you holding up? I need to get back over there. Don't think he made it. Savar? I guess you did the best you could. Rest easy now. 
I'll make sure your people are safe. I should let Lakasha know. And give her the Stormbird heart. So we have to go back down the mountain and let the Order of Twilight know that their priest is dead and then see what their reaction is going to be. We will do that after a break here on the live stream and in the next episode on YouTube. So make sure if you're hanging out here live that you stand up, get a drink, walk around. We'll be back in a few minutes uh, on the live side of things and we will pick this up on the YouTube side in the next episode. So we will be right back. <laughs> 